Please be seated. Good afternoon. It is indeed my great pleasure on this glorious day to welcome all of you, the families, friends, honored guests, faculty and staff, and especially the 2006 graduating class of the College of St. Benedict. We welcome you to the 91st commencement exercise. I would like to begin by introducing the members of today's platform party. On my left is the president of the College of St. Benedict, Dr. Marianne Benninger. Next to her is Kathy Cooney, vice chair of the board of trustees. Next is Dorothy Goretzky, today's recipient of the president's medal. On my right, is the provost of the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University, Dr. Henry Smarinski. Next to him is the prioress of the Order of the Sisters of St. Benedict, Sister Nancy Bauer. Next is Patricia Cispedes Schuler, Director of Campus Ministry. And to my far right is the President of the Alumni Council, Sherry Lamaker Rogalski. To my right, seated with the faculty, is Frank Ardolf. He will be receiving an honorary degree today. I now invite Patricia to the podium to give the invocation. Let us pray. Divine God of all beings, great God of compassion and mercy, may you the heart of these students of class of 2006 of the College of St. Benedict be home to you like your trees in the woods of CSV and SJU. May they feel your presence, guiding them in fear and courage. May the strength and balance of your love and justice fill their minds, hearts, feet, and hands to love and act with justice and may then walk into their new journeys with trust and gladness. Beyond time, beyond the end, beyond the beginning. May the light of these students of class of 2006 shine and illuminate the whole world with holiness. We ask this to you, loving, loving and tender God, for the center where we are right here, right now. Amen. President Marianne Benninger will now confer the honorary Doctor of Humane Letters upon Francis Ardolph. My microphone disconnected. In recognition of leadership and generosity, that has enabled thousands of students in California and Minnesota to grow intellectually and spiritually, I hereby confer upon Francis Ardolph an honorary doctorate of humane letters this 13th day of May, 2006.
a pleasure. Thank you very, very much, Frank. Is this it, or can we <laughs> stay here and say anything? Get our picture taken. Anyway, I know where to stand exactly. I want to thank everybody. It's, I didn't know I'd ever get to be a doctor, but here I am. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Frank. Good luck, and God bless all you wonderful, young, beautiful girls. What a wonderful class. I mean, it, it looked, I saw them, I thought there'd be no end of it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. President Mary Ann Binninger will now present the President's Medal to Dorothy Goretzky. Dorothy, will you please join me at the podium? Dorothy Goretzky is a wonderful example of a woman with strength, grace, and conviction values we seek to instill among our students. We honor Dorothy Goretzky, a distinguished artist in her own right, for her philanthropic leadership and vision in the renovation and expansion of the Benedicta Art Center. The Goretzky Gallery and the Goretzky Theater stand as lasting tributes to her dedication to the arts. Every year, thousands of students, faculty, and community members take advantage of the programs, shows, and events hosted on campus, making the Benedicta Art Center one of the finest performance venues in the upper Midwest. We hope that future generations will find inspiration in her example. It is in recognition of her lasting and dedicated support that I hereby present to Dorothy Goretzky the President's Medal of the College of St. Benedict. Thank you, Mary Ann. It is a great honor for me to accept this Presidential men Medal. I am not a college graduate, but as I was walking in procession with the graduating class, a thought came into my mind. The thought was that I would have been so proud to have graduated from the College of St. Benedict. I have lived a full life married to my best friend, Benedict, for 54 years. We have five children and eight grandchildren. We are both in our 70s and are still working side by side at our manufacturing plant now for almost 40 years. Our granddaughter, Carrie Goretzky, graduated from St. Ben's in 2003. Ben and I came to visit her occasionally on campus. We were always impressed and overwhelmed with everything we saw here at St. Ben's. We are donors to the College of St. Benedict and both Ben and I have become very comfortable here. We have met a lot of wonderful people and continue continue to meet new friends. Congratulations to each and every one of you graduating today. Remember all of the good times you have had along the way while here at school. Remember to donate to the College of St. Benedict when you find yourselves at a comfortable time in your life. It is a great feeling to donate and see others benefit from your gift. Always be proud to tell the world that you graduated from the College of St. Benedict at St. Joseph, Minnesota. My sincere thank you, Marianne and staff, for this very special once-in-a-lifetime experience you have given me today. Thank you. Today, our commencement address will be presented by a woman who needs no further introduction President Marianne Benninger.
Are you tired of me yet? Good afternoon to the women of the College of St. Benedict, class of 2006. Good afternoon to parents, grandparents, sisters and brothers, nieces and nephews, significant others, and friends. Good afternoon to faculty and staff, and good afternoon to our distinguished platform party. I've said good afternoon to everyone here, and I hope that they'll listen to my speech. But this address is meant specifically for you, women of the College of St. Benedict, class of 2006, and I hope especially that you will listen. I'll start by giving you a reason to listen. Several months ago, when College of St. Benedict and St. John's were grappling with a particularly difficult issue, one that involved a member of our community, and one on which we had sharp disagreement, I sent a carefully worded email to our community. It was about how, even though each of us had a slightly different perspective, we should love and respect this particular member of our community and remember our hallmark values of listening and hospitality. I'll never forget what one student, Jessica Shearer, who's actually not a member yet of, uh, not yet a graduate of St. Ben's, Jessica wrote back to me by email after my message to the community. And she said that she and her roommate had decided that I was just like Dumbledore. <laughs> For the one person in this room who doesn't know the Harry Potter novels, Dumbledore is the headmaster of Hogwarts, Harry Potter's boarding school. Now this comment set me back a little bit because Dumbledore is tall, thin, craggy, old, and white-haired. We do share in common that we run a school, and in that sense, our role is the same. I hope we can accept that Dumbledore is worthy to really listen to, and I hope it was that aspect of his character, his wisdom, that Jessica and her roommate were referring to, not just that he happened to be the only other person in the world that they could think of who was also running a school. So keep Dumbledore in mind for a few minutes while I give you a quiz on an entirely different topic, similar only in that it has to do with movies. I'm taking a big risk here because I suspect that there might not even be one College of St. Benedict soon to be graduate who can answer this question. There may not even be a parent or a faculty member here who can answer this question, but I'm positive there's a grandparent here who can answer it. So here's what we'll do. I can't see the, the, the students very well. You're not quite graduates yet. I can't see you guys very well, but I'll try. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask the students first, and if you know the answer, stand up, because I'm going to give you first crack at this. If you don't get it, I'm going to go to the parents and then to the grandparents. You get the drill. OK, so here's, here's the question. What do the following films have in common? Gypsy. Auntie Mame, His Girl Friday, Sister Kenny, The Trouble with Angels, Where Angels Go, Trouble Follows, and Mrs. Polifax Spy. Any grads out there who can answer the question? I don't see anyone standing up. OK. Parents. Any parents out there who can answer the question? Yes. OK. <laughs> The answer is, they all starred Rosalind Russell, a character actress who played in 56 films from 1934 to 1972. That's an average of more than one film per year for a career that spanned 40 years. She never won an Academy Award. She died in 1976 of breast cancer, but also suffered from rheumatoid arthritis, a debilitating disease, and I know that because my mother suffers from it. She had this disease for a significant part of her life. Rosalind Russell is my all-time favorite actress, and I thought that she was beautiful. Pretty much no one else paid any attention to her, and certainly she hasn't made it into the old-time films that our students seem to watch. She, wasn't, she was well-known, though, in her day, but she wasn't really thought of as a sex symbol. She always got the guy at the end of the film, except when she was playing a nun, as in Trouble with Angels, where, in fact, she was at her most beautiful. The guy, however, was always one who was able to tolerate strong women. 
When I look back, I realize why I was so fascinated by Rosalind Russell as a child. She always played a woman of substance, a woman of power, a career woman. She also had a sense of humor, a kind of pick yourself up, brush yourself off style of nurturing her fellow characters, and she didn't take any guff from anyone. In a sense, she was typecast, but not really. Nuns, like she played in Trouble with Angels, nurses, and high-powered business types, and dotty but competent older detectives, like she played in Mrs. Polifax, don't seem to go together. In fact, Rosalind Russell wasn't typecast, she was character cast. There is something about her substance as a powerful, strong, determined woman that showed through in every role that she played, regardless of the role. One of her last films was shot remarkably in the town where my father worked at the time, and a small portion of it was shot at his place of business. Rosalind Russell would have been over 60 years old at the time, suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. It was a very hot summer day, and my dad got to watch something like 20 takes of the scene they were doing. Rosalind Russell didn't figure very heavily in that particular scene, and she could have spent the day in an air-conditioned trailer. Instead, she was out there all day, cheering on her fellow actors and behaving like a trooper. In contrast, a young up-and-coming actress, and don't shout out her name because I don't want to have a libel suit, a young up-and-coming actress, who I won't name, who's no longer young, but you probably wouldn't know her anyway, so it doesn't matter, was also in the film, and she behaved like a brat, demanding attention, whining about the heat, and generally making things unpleasant for herself and others. My parents couldn't justify letting me out of school that day to watch Rosalind Russell, so I waited all day until my dad got home so he could give me the full report. And I still remember to this day what he said. He said, boy, does that Rosalind Russell have character. Now, I didn't go on to be a nun, although, as for all good Catholic girls, that was ever a possibility. I didn't go on to be a nurse, as in Sister Kenny, who incidentally wasn't a sister at all. I didn't go on to be a businesswoman in a for-profit corporation, a stage mother, as in Gypsy, or a down-and-out career woman who rises back up during the Depression as an anti-mame. Funnily, however, I learned through Rosalind Russell's films that role and character are two different things. As women, I think we, were all, we are all too prone to see roles as inseparable from character. How, I ask myself, could I possibly be like Dumbledore? I think I won't ever you know, consider becoming a wizard because wizards are old skinny white guys with long white hair. Dumbledore and I are so different on the surface that unless someone points it out explicitly, it's almost impossible for me to see that we've been given some of the same gifts if that's what students happen to think, or that we may have developed some of the same talents. See, so maybe I should have become a wizard, because at least from Jessica's perspective, in ways that really matter, I'm somehow like him. This inability to separate role from character and to focus on role puts us in a box, restricts our options, and paints the world for us as black and white rather than gray. It does this for men, too. But right now, in this place, at this time, my words are for you, and for you alone, as women. Please think carefully about what I am saying. If we look at outward similarities, gender, race or ethnicity, family background, age, any of those, instead of character, on the basis by which we decide on who to emulate, we overlook a lot of people who could be role models for us. Now, I'm about to say something that's going to seem old and boring, and I bet most of you who are graduating think that it's irrelevant for your lives. I bet most of you think that it's no longer a problem. And here's what I want to say to you. There are still gender differences and gender influences that work to the detriment of women. Thus, they work to the detriment of society as a whole. I submit that these gender differences exist not because of something that men do to us, because we, we women, still focus on role rather than character to make our decisions about who we will become when we grow up. At the College of St. Benedict, we still graduate more women in traditional fields, education, nursing, and psychology, that part of psychology that's a helping field, than we do other areas. And we graduate fewer women in non-traditional fields for women, economics, physics, computer science, for example, than we do in other areas. 
This is particularly an issue for the College of St. Benedict. We are more likely than other institutions, women's colleges and co-ed colleges, to reflect this pattern. I think this is a serious problem, and I hope that I can say something today to cause you to think it's a serious problem. Now, before I formulate my argument, argument I want to make one other thing absolutely and perfectly clear. I don't think it's a serious problem that people choose nursing or education. And I'm gratified that so many of you here have chosen these professions. Nursing and education are two of the most important careers today, and extraordinary talent and character are requirements to do them well. And those of you who are about to embark on those careers have extraordinary talent and character. Now imagine with me for a moment that a spaceship from Mars has landed here at the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University. The Martians have been sent by their leader to research human behavior and draw some conclusions about what characteristics are necessary for a human to be successful in his or her profession. The Martians have been looking at our planet closely, and aside from the pollution that we've created, they've decided that we've been a pretty productive society, and they want to emulate us, some of what we do. So the Martians finish their research and report the following to their leader. Well, there's one thing, one fact, that's absolutely clear to us. There seem to be a few professions where there's only one requirement to be successful. It appears to that in order to be what they call a nurse, or in order to be what they call a teacher, one me must be of this gender that they call female to do the job. It also appears that to be what they call a computer scientist who deals in language that supports the entire information structure of the planet, or an economist who understands the dynamics of a worldwide system of monetary resources, one must be of the gender they call male. Apparently, the Martians say, from the data we've collected, there are very few exceptions to this rule, and these are the only required characteristics to do these professions. It will be easy for us to set up a similar situation on Mars. We simply need to ensure that all the gleeps become nurses and all the glops become economists. This clearly works very well for the humans, so we should do it too. So what did this Martian, these Martians miss? About nursing, they miss that one psychological and mental character must include compassion, perspective taking, attention to detail, and always alert analysis of data that are present on the spot, rapid decision making in times of crisis and stress, stamina, ability to work as part of a team, a high level of knowledge of several scientific disciplines including anatomy, physiology, chemistry, biology, psychology, and neuroscience. And I could go on and on and talk about the characteristics and the character and the talent a nurse needs to do his job or her job. The Martians also miss the fact that gender is not a requirement for the job. Likewise, about economists, they miss that economists have excellent research, interpretation, and analysis skills, excellent advising skills, have an interest in knowing whether their ideas result in change, can solve complex problems, are thorough, methodical, and accurate, and most importantly, have well-developed communication skills. The Martians also miss the fact that gender is not a requirement for the job. Now please be honest with me and think about this. How many of you women who are graduating possess at least some or maybe even all of the skills that are required to be an economist? How many of you considered econ as a real option for your major? Am I making my point? If you only look at role and never look at qualities, talents, or character, you, just like the Martians, will draw incorrect conclusions. Okay, I have one last story for you. One of my best friends, I'll call her Barb, is married to Bob. They have been professors for their entire careers. They're both in their early 40s. Barb and Bob have two children, Sally and Susie. And since those children have been born, Bob and Barb have partnered to raise them together. Anyone who knows them knows that they don't distinguish between their roles as parents because of their sex. Last year, Barb was given the opportunity to try out an administrative role as a one-year interim replacement for the Vice President of Student Development at her institution. So she did the same job that Mary Geller does here. She did it well, and she liked it. They've now filled the position permanently, 
And Barb was never a candidate for that job, but she's learned that she likes administration and she wants to be a college president someday. Go figure why anybody would want to do that, but that's what she wants to do. So she wants her next career move to be that of a provost, like Henry Smarinsky. Fortunately, that opportunity just became available at her own institution. Well, as you may have sensed during your time here, the faculty administration dynamic can be very political. So everyone was talking at that institution about who would be provost, and Barb was considered a front runner like most ev by most everyone, including the president, who's also an accomplished woman. About five days before Barb was to be offered the position, she and Bob discovered that her younger daughter, Susie, has juvenile diabetes. They spent several worried days at the hospital, learning about all the changes they would have to make in their lives to keep Susie healthy. Many of you have juvenile diabetes in your family, and many, many, some of you in the graduating class have, have lived their lives with this disease. You know then that it requires a lot of great care, glucose testing several times a day, an insulin shot several times a day, and it requires a very special approach to diet. In short, to keep Susie healthy, it's going to require an enormous amount of time and attention. The news of this situation began to spread among the faculty at Barb's institution. Well, Barb can't possibly become the provost. What kind of mom would she be? In other words, how could she fulfill her role as a mother? How could she fulfill her role expectations? Even her president, a woman, had second thoughts about Barb's ability to step into her new role now that her child has special health needs. No one said, what about Bob? You do know that movie. <laughs> because Bob's role as a father wasn't supposed to be the primary one in this situation. Think with me a minute here. No one considered Bob's talents, character, no one considered Barb's talents, character, or track record as a parent. They simply considered the role that they thought she should play. Similarly, no one considered Bob's talent, character, or track record as a parent. They simply considered the role they thought he would play. All of Bob's nurturing, knowledge about his children's schedules, schoolwork, routine, the nights he stayed up with them when they were sick, the times he polished their fingernails, took them to doctor's appointments, none of that counted right now when the child was sick because he wasn't the mother. What people were saying was that Barb's role as a mother required that she put other people first and that in doing so, she shut down her opportunities for advancement and success. They were saying that Bob's role as a father required that he do the opposite. Would shutting down her opportunities for advancement and success make her a better mother or make her a better role model for her daughters? And what about Susie and Sally? What do they learn if their dad's life goes on exactly as before, but their mom's life radically changes because one of them needs special care? And so we pass our expectations on to the next generation. So do you want to hear the end of the story? Three days after Susie was diagnosed, Bob and Barb were trying to figure out how to best care for her. At that time, a student from Barb's college disappeared and was feared dead. Since Barb was the VP for student development, she was responsible for managing this crisis. Before she was even able to get her mind around her daughter's needs, she found herself involved in a round-the-clock tragedy that rocked their community. She did her job, and she trusted her husband, her partner, to care for their daughter as he always had, and as she had always trusted him to do. Her president saw her response to the crisis and described her as a rock throughout it. Seeing Barb in that environment helped the president to understand that it was her character, not her role, that would get Barb and her family through the situation. The president offered Barb the job of provost, which she begins on July 1st. I saw Susie last week. She's healthier than she's ever been. At the age of seven, with her parents' supervision, she tests her own glucose levels and administers her own shots. One month into her new life, she has pretty much learned what she can't eat and what she can and when she must eat. She knows that she has two parents who love her, and thankfully, she has absolutely no idea of what a woman's role should be and what a man's role should be. I implied a few minutes ago that Barb should put herself first. Some of you have heard me say this before. Put yourself first. I bet your reaction to this was, she's telling us to be selfish. 
What do they say to you? I know moms and graduates have heard this, but dads may not. Um, what do they say to you during the safety speech on an airplane? They say, put your own airbag on first before helping the children or the elderly. They don't mean be selfish and suck up all the oxygen so that nobody else can get any. What they mean is make yourself strong so that you can be of better service to everyone else. Broadly stated, putting yourself first makes you a better contributor to society and a stronger person for those close to you. I submit that role expectations for us tell us to put everyone else, especially men, first. Andy Rooney, the 60 Minutes commentator, was speaking th about this a few weeks ago when he reflected on why the United States doesn't have a woman president and why we aren't likely to have one in the near future. He said, essentially, that it is women's fault that we don't have a women pre woman president, not men's fault. And I agree with him. Andy Rooney said, every time I think about it, I think about how wrong it is that we've never had a woman president of the United States. How did that happen, he said. There's never been one American woman smart enough to be president. There isn't a single woman alive who is as capable as George Bush. <laughs> Andy Rooney said that. I didn't say that. We don't know who is smarter, men or women. There have been IQ tests over the years, but the results never can, this is still Andy talking. There have never been IQ tests, so there have been IQ tests over the years, but the results never conclusively determine any intellectual superiority for any sex. It's interesting, though, that last year, for every 133,000 women who graduated from college, only 100,000 men graduated from college. Our failure to elect a woman isn't because of any conspiracy by men. Still Andy talking. Our failure to elect a woman isn't because of any conspiracy by men. There are 146 million men in the United States and 151 million women. And one of the things that makes it strange that we never have had a woman president is that more women than men vote. It must be that even women don't vote for women, unquote. Mr. Rooney is saying, essentially, that women put men first. We put them first when we give up our dreams to take sole responsibility for raising a family. I, I feel the need to clarify here. I am not saying that children should necessarily not have a parent home raising the family. I'm saying that both genders have the capability to do that very strong, challenging, and important job. We put them first when we give up our dreams to take sole responsibility for raising a family. We put them first when we vote for a male candidate over a female candidate, even if he isn't smarter or more experienced. We put them first when after we graduate, we give money back to our husband's alma mater and not to our own. And yes, my dear graduates, as trivial as it may seem to you, we put men first when we proudly wear the name of their school across our chests more proudly than we wear our own. We can love men, and I have one that I love very much. We can support them. We can support our families and our husbands and our partners. We can nurture them. We can partner with them, but darn it, we can still put ourselves first and thus grow stronger. I know that right now you're very focused on your future and particular in pursuing a job or an advanced degree. As you contemplate the different directions your life may take you, please consider carefully the character that will be with you wherever you go, whatever you do. Like Rosalind Russell and like my friend Barb, you can and will play many roles throughout your life, yet your substance as a strong, powerful, determined woman will serve you well in every conceivable role that you undertake. Remember to lead with character and talent. Don't just play a role, and especially don't play a role in which you always put yourself last. 
When you meet other people, be curious about their character as well as their roles, and be sure to include character models among your role models. Remember, everyone has a little bit of Dumbledore in her that is worth discovering. Thank you, and God bless you all. I am very pleased and honored to introduce today's student speaker, Emily Johnston from New Brighton, Minnesota. <laughs> Emily is graduating today with a major in English and a minor in secondary education. During her four years at the College of St. Benedict, Emily has been an active member of this campus community. Her involvement has ranged from acting as an admissions office student ambassador to participating in an alternative spring trip to the south of Chicago. Emily is also the co-founder and co-president of the College of St. Benedict Lacrosse Club. As a coach, as a manager, and an experienced player, she was proud of the team's accomplishment. This past year, the team posted an impressive record and placed fourth in the league. Emily has fostered the development of the club into a competitive team and a vibrant group on campus. Emily considers one of her most memorable college experiences to be her semester studying abroad in Galway, Ireland. She attributes her broadened global perspective to that experience abroad. This past summer, Emily interned with Target Corporation, where she was recognized with multiple awards for her performance. After graduation, Emily will join Target as a business analyst. Please join me in welcoming Emily with a warm round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Cooney. As I packed up my room this past week, I was reminded of the day I arrived at the College of St. Benedict nearly four years ago. I remember feeling overwhelmed. The lines of cars in each parking lot, the sticky August weather, the sweaty dads doing their best to piece together the dorm room lofts. I remember barely having hauled my boxes to my room when it was time to say goodbye. I hugged my parents, I watched them walk out of Corona Hall, and I turned to my roommate and I cried. My roommate looked at me and she did the same. <laughs> then realizing we were late for an orientation activity, we attempted to find our way to Mary Commons. Reaching the end of the hallway, we realized we'd gone the wrong way, and the crying continued. <laughs> the good news, Mom and Dad, is that after four years, I am no longer lost. I can find my way to any campus building, but more importantly, I have found myself and my own path. As College of St. Benedict graduates, we are equipped and poised to be leaders on our own chosen paths, and more importantly, we understand the value of leading with character, community, character, and leadership, the three components of our College of St. Benedict experience that will shape our lives. The importance of community has no doubt impacted our years at St. Ben's, whether participating in a Lenten service project or cheering on a classmate at a Blazer sporting event. We have been touched by this community, this group of people with similar interests, similar values, and similar goals. Over our four years at St. Ben's, our sense of community has deepened. During our first year, community might have been bundling up with our floor mates, running outside of Aurora Hall, and building a snowman on that first snowfall of the season. Sophomore year may have led us to Sister Lois's home in Margretta Hall to get help on that first real paper. Our junior year might have led us abroad, where we dined below the Acropolis or shared a meal with a South African family. And in the previous weeks, we may have felt community when discussing potential job or volunteer opportunities with the St. Ben's alumna. These are the moments that have deepened our sense of the St. Ben's community and what it means to be a member of this community. But I have to consider, the moment we stepped onto this campus, we were technically, by definition, a community. How does a group of individuals with similar interests, values, and goals become such a positive and enriching environment like that of St. Ben's? What gives the community and these experiences depth and meaning are the qualities of its members. After all, 
a community is only as solid as the character of its individuals. An outstanding community, like that of St. Ben's, one that values ethics, morals, growth, is created by outstanding individuals, people that exemplify trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness. These are the qualities that set St. Ben's graduates apart from the others. Because of the importance of these traits, much of our time here at St. Ben's has involved the shaping and developing of our character. Initially, the shaping occurred through external forces, for example, our resident assistants or every woman's guide. While no one was knocking on our doors each night to ensure that we were following each and every policy, we were challenged to make good choices. <laughs> Eventually, our education provided us with opportunities for intrinsic development of this character. We might have found these character building moments when participating in an alternative spring break where we built and restored homes for the elderly in Kentucky, or when studying abroad, or perhaps it was when we were conducting research for that senior thesis while being held accountable for its papers and presentations. Or maybe it was while teaching in an elementary school classroom, or when assuming leadership on a team or group on campus. These are the St. Ben's experiences that have shaped our character and positioned us to be leaders. Now, more than ever, during times of great change, there is a need for solid character and quality leadership. Paula Goldman, author of Imagining Ourselves, Global Voices from a New Generation of Women, writes, if you are a woman between the ages of 20 and 40, living anywhere on the globe, you are a part of the most educated, professionally empowered, international generation of women ever. Our St. Ben's experience expanded our world and subsequently our responsibilities. These leadership possession, positions that we are prepared to assume do not necessarily require that we lead as senators, as surgeons, as Pulitzer Prize winners, but rather we are simply called to lead as women who are outstanding at their vocation, whether that vocation be as a lawyer, a volunteer in China, a mother, an accountant, or a graduate school student. When engaged in our vocations, we need to be aware of making decisions that resonate with our character in all realms of our life. In the craze of packing your excessive amounts of sweatshirts and books, as you prepare for the next phase of life, take special care to preserve your character. Graduates of the College of St. Benedict, take the character that made this community a special place to be and incorporate it into your future. Congratulations, class of 2006. Your quality character will serve you well on the paths you have chosen. Dr. Smirinsky, I invite you to come forward for the citation of degrees. Today's program lists 464 candidates for the baccalaureate degree. The College of St. Benedict is happy to recognize these degree candidates. It is understood that the appropriate degrees are earned by candidates who successfully complete all requirements for that degree by the end of this scholastic year. Will the candidates for the degrees please rise? Dr. Mary Ann Benninger, President of the College of St. Benedict, these students are now presented to you for conferral of the appropriate degrees. On the recommendation of the faculty of the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon those candidates whose names appear in the commencement program the appropriate Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees indicated with all the attendant rights and privileges 
of which the degrees to be given to them shall forever be the testimony. Now I ask Dr. Rita Knesel, Academic Dean and Associate Provost, to read the names of our candidates for degrees. May I ask the audience to please hold your applause until all candidates have received their degrees. Thank you. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with honors. Sarah Marie Ulfs, summa cum laude, Delta Epsilon Sigma, distinction in psychology. Lindsay Kathleen Anderson, Magna Cum Laude, Elementary Education. Catherine Maureen Albrecht, Magna Cum Laude, Individualized Elementary Education. Kristen Marie Bankers, Magna Cum Laude, English. Lisa Marie Bennett, Magna Cum Laude, Communication. Anne Haley Bowman, Magna Cum Laude, Political Science. Andrea K. Brandel, Magna Cum Laude, Social Work. Jill Lene Bauer Brame, Magna Cum Laude, Elementary Education. Amanda Lee Brew, Magna Cum Laude, History. Ashley Ann Briggs, Magna Cum Laude, English. Catherine Elizabeth Cahill, Magna Cum Laude, Biology. Abby Christine Campbell, Magna Cum Laude, English, French. Laura Marie Christian, Magna Cum Laude, Elementary Education. Paula Patricia Chupa, Magna Cum Laude, Political Science. Catherine Elizabeth Clays, Magna Cum Laude, Communication. Ashley Marie Connick, Magna Cum Laude, Elementary Education. Emily Locker Cook, Magna Cum Laude, French Psychology. Michelle Lynn Decock, Magna Cum Laude, All College Honors, English. Megan K. Dykert, Cum Laude, Communication Management. Kelly Brianna Denny, Cum Laude, Nutrition. Nicole Vanessa Daya, Cum Laude, Accounting. Elizabeth Louise Digman, summa cum laude, delta epsilon sigma, all college honors, distinction in English. Lauren Andrea Deutscher, cum laude, management. Siobhan Margaret Early, cum laude, elementary education. Emily Taylor Felton, magna cum laude, English. Nicole Ann Fritz, Magna Cum Laude, All College Honors, Distinction in Psychology. Angela Jean Furman, Cum Laude, Elementary Education. Rebecca Lee Gillis, Magna Cum Laude, Psychology. Nicole Darlene Gaydon, Magna Cum Laude, Theater. Heather Lynn Hampton, Cum Laude, Political Science. Rachel Marie Haney, Cum Laude, Management. Gloria Ann Chick Hardy, Egregia Cum Laude, Individualized Communication. <laughs> Stephanie Nicole Hartje, Summa Cum Laude, Distinction in Economics. Sarah Marie Hennick, Magna Cum Laude, Elementary Education. Jessica Mary Henning, Magna Cum Laude, Elementary Education. 
Kelsey Marie Henningsen, magna cum laude, natural science. Lindsay Gail Hildman, cum laude, elementary education. Katie Ann Hopkins, magna cum laude, elementary education. Megan Marie Hurrell, magna cum laude, psychology. Nicole Marie Hubner, magna cum laude, psychology. Jalissa Joy Hoopenbecker, cum laude, biology. Elise Helene Johnson, cum laude, biology. Kristen Yuying Johnson, cum laude, biology. Lynn Marie Johnson, cum laude, psychology. Emily Marie Johnston, cum laude, English. Bethany Ann Keen, magna cum laude, English psychology. Emily Ann Clare, magna cum laude, management. Sarah Marie Nepper, Egregia Cum Laude, Delta Epsilon Sigma, Distinction in Computer Science Theater. <laughs> Jessica Ann Koskella, Magna Cum Laude, Communication. Ashley Lynn Cost, Magna Cum Laude, Political Science. Bridget K. Kramer, Cum Laude, Elementary Education. Jennifer Elizabeth Cruz, summa cum laude, distinction in biology. Michelle Elizabeth Kurt, magna cum laude, biology. Kate Bunkers Lawson, magna cum laude, management, Spanish. Erica Holly Layer, summa cum laude, delta epsilon sigma, chemistry. Bethany Aaron Lea, summa cum laude, delta epsilon sigma, communication. Molly Lorraine Leitner, magna cum laude, English. Emily Claire Lewis, summa cum laude, elementary education. Emily Rose Lidbeck, magna cum laude, art, psychology. Nicole Rachel Lindgren, Cum laude, management. Karen Andrea Lundby, cum laude, sociology. Megan Amy Luther, cum laude, management. Kendra Marie Lynch, cum laude, communication. Stephanie Leilani Mansano, magna cum laude, distinction in computer science. Carrie Ann McConville, magna cum laude, elementary education. Brittany Diane Miller, summa cum laude, English theater. Angela Marie Moller, summa cum laude, delta epsilon sigma, psychology. Jennifer Marie Monroe, cum laude, social science. Brittany Ann Morozik, magna cum laude, delta epsilon sigma, communication. Stephanie Marie Mueller, cum laude, theology. Chantel Marie Needham, magna cum laude, elementary education. Cassandra Marie Newhouse, cum laude, all college honors, psychology. Melanie Don Newell, cum laude, peace studies. Kristen Elizabeth Nowak, summa cum laude, delta epsilon sigma, communication, Spanish. Jenny Lynn O'Brien, egregia cum laude, delta epsilon sigma, accounting, Amy Christine Orecchia, magna cum laude, distinction in psychology, Spanish. Gwen Marie Parks, summa cum laude, delta epsilon sigma, distinction in sociology. Katie Jo Peterson, egregia cum laude, elementary education. Ashley Marie Pinckney, magna cum laude, mathematics. 
Christine Marie Pladsen, magna cum laude, social science. Sophia Catherine Pulaski, cum laude, environmental studies. Danielle Johanna Purcell, summa cum laude, accounting Spanish. Desiree Marie Rydell, cum laude, accounting. Elizabeth Ann Reisdorf, magna cum laude, delta epsilon sigma, all college honors, distinction in dietetics. Tony Marie Roberts, cum laude, biology. Bethany Amber Rosentrader, cum laude, elementary education. Tanya Rose Sauer, cum laude, music. Cassandra Ann Schlangen, cum laude, English. Christina Marie Sherman, cum laude, liberal studies. Alicia Ann Simons, Egregia Cum Laude, Delta Epsilon Sigma, Elementary Education. Sarah Violet Smith, Magna Cum Laude, Elementary Education. Emily Karen Stenberg, Magna Cum Laude, English. Jacqueline Lee Stevens, Magna Cum Laude, English. Nicole Marie Stewart, Summa Cum Laude, Spanish. Martina Talich, magna cum laude, distinction in French, distinction in Spanish. Amanda Jo Thompson, cum laude, English. Dragana Vidovich, magna cum laude, distinction in psychology, distinction in theater. Kara Ray Vandahar, cum laude, chemistry. Bethany Jo Welly, cum laude, accounting. Amanda Jean Whitcomb, magna cum laude, management. Laura Michelle Weiland, cum laude, all college honors, distinction in natural science. Karen Therese Willette, summa cum laude, psychology. Lindsay Marie Wilson, magna cum laude, psychology. Lindsay Jean Wolf, cum laude, psychology. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing with Honors. Maren Christine Ashley, magna cum laude. Lindsay Marie Bestick, magna cum laude. Molly Mae Brown, cum laude. Kelly Marie Becker DeWine, summa cum laude. Suzanne Marie Gergetz, magna cum laude. Melissa Lynn Horning, summa cum laude. Catherine Marie Icano, cum laude. Jamie Lynn Newman, magna cum laude. Bridget Marie Smith, cum laude. Jennifer Marie Stoffel, cum laude. Christine Marie Stutzman, cum laude. Joanna Denise Tapella, summa cum laude. Kelly Lynn Warner, cum laude. Leah Therese Worm, summa cum laude, delta epsilon sigma. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Satomi Akimoto, Management. Stephanie Christine Albrecht, Biology. Patricia Ann Allen, Communication. Pari Ashley Allen, Dietetics. Janae Ellen Altapeter, History. Marie Therese Alton, Communication, English. Catherine Jean Anderson, Biology. Carly Jo Anderson, Psychology. Carrie Elizabeth Anderson, Theology. Gail Catherine Anderson, Dietetics. 
Gina Nicole Anderson, Social Work. Kathleen Marie Anderson, Dietetics. Catherine Lynn Anderson, Elementary Education. Lindsay Renee Anderson, Political Science. Jessica Mary Argabright, German. Ashley Lee Armstrong, Communication. Krista Larray Arnold, Communication. Sarah May Arntzen, Art. Elizabeth Ruth Ostad, Mathematics. Holly Marie Backus, History. Mary Maureen Baldwin, Psychology. Rachel Marie Ellen Bach, Communication. Catherine Ann Banks, Political Science. Kimberly Jean Bechtold, Management. Samantha May Beck, History. Elizabeth Marie Beach, Management. Cassie Ann Benson, Communication. Kristen Louise Baranek, Elementary Education. Elizabeth Jordan Berg, Nutrition. Holly Jo Bito, Art. Greta Jean Beersock, Liberal Studies. Annie Marie Bullman, Natural Science. Sheena Lynn Brandle, Theology. Amanda R. Broadbent, Natural Science. Allison Lee Brom, Communication. Marissa Catherine Brown, Management. Kari Renee Bruns, Elementary Education. Jennifer Samantha Bryant, Psychology. Jennifer Lee Buboltz, Elementary Education. Lisa Ann Bush, Liberal Studies. Linnea Suzanne Calderon, Management. Melissa Jean Cambrone, Psychology. Stacy Lee Campbell, Biology. Andrea Sue Carlson, Communication. Maria Christine Carroll, Biology. Heather Michelle Chirpellis, Theology. Alexis Choi, Natural Science. Megan Ann Claremont, Biology. Ashley Elizabeth Clark, Psychology, Spanish. Patricia Doris Klintzman, Elementary Education. Chelsea Ann Kors, Biology. Melissa Jill Cole, Political Science. Jill Nicole Condon, Elementary Education. Suzanne Marie Conlin, Psychology. Nika Louise Connors, Spanish. Amanda Jo Crosby, Music. Sarah Jane Daly, Theology. Rachel Ann Davich, Biology. Danielle Yannick Davis, Communication. Jimmy Dolkar, Communication Management. Sarah Regina Domini, Accounting Management. Catherine Marie Doherty, Psychology. Jennifer Jane Drena, Management. Melissa Marie Dreyer, Biology. Nicole Christina Dewar, Management. Anne Elaine Eagles, Psychology. Caitlin Jean Ebbets, Biology. 
Lindsay Faith Ellinger, Psychology. Nicole Ryan Eicher, Communication. Megan Catherine Ellenbecker, Management. Sarah Catherine Emmerling, Psychology. Abigail Marie Everman, Management. Megan Rose Philippi, English. Carrie Ann Flathers, Psychology. Catherine Teresa Fleischacker, Theater. Anne Marie Fady, Chemistry. Catherine Elizabeth Fogel, Biology. Laura Lynn Foray, Biochemistry. Kelly Marie Fox, Natural Science. Allison Marie Freundschu, Psychology. Amy Lynn Fritz, Psychology. Ashley Marie Fruth, English, Political Science. Maria Claire Gable, Sociology. Megan Elizabeth Gaudet, French, Political Science. Dana Jane Gervais, Biology. Lila Bridget Gilbert, Liberal Studies. Mary Elizabeth Gleason, Theater. Nicole Jean Glenna, Music. Jennifer Ann Gorrell, Management. Christina Marie Granger, Communication. Jennifer Catherine Grosser, Psychology. Alita Marie Gustafson, Liberal Studies. Heidi Ann Hagenson, Spanish. Julie Karen Haberly, Psychology. Abigail Marie Hahn, Communication. Abigail Arthur Haluska, Art. Lisa Joy Hammer, Sociology. Erin Lynn Hansen, Biology. Jennifer Ann Hansen, Management. Kelly Christine Hansen, Communication. Lisa Ann Heron, Management. Megan Ann Harris, Psychology. Natalie Christine Harris, Communication. Amy Elizabeth Hartman, Psychology. Anne Elizabeth Harvey, Mathematics. Anna Lisa Heikinen, Elementary Education. Shanna Ray Henderson, Management. Sarah Ann Henning, Political Science. E. Her Theology. Kalu Her Communication. Catherine Suzanne Hines, English. Ashley Jean Hinnenkamp, Communication. Tamara Jo Hazy, Biology. Carrie Ann Holm, Management. Melissa Ray Holm, Environmental Studies. Sarah Rose Hankamp, Social Work. Megan Elise Hooks, Psychology. Claire Kathleen Houlihan, Biochemistry. Connie Marie Hoskins, Old College Honors Distinction in Psychology. Sierra James Houston, Sociology. Jessica Lynn Harvey, Theater. Erin Marie Hurley, Psychology. Tara Joe Huxford, Communication. 
Carrie Ann Highland, Management. Rachel Ann Istis, Management. Renee Jacqueline Iverson, Theology. Sari Corinne Jam, Communication. Brianna Lynn Jarvie, Communication. Bridget Helen Javorski, Communication. Catherine Christina Jermahoff, Biochemistry. Olivia Ingalls Jewett, Psychology. Amanda Christine Johnson, Social Work. Ashley Sophia Johnson, Economics, French. Chelsea Don Johnson, Communication. Danielle Marie Johnson, English. Glenice Alicia Johnson, Chemistry. Heather Joy Johnson, Accounting. Katie Ann Johnson, Political Science. Crystal Amy Johnson, Biology. Ellen Susan Jost, Communication. Megan Elizabeth Joyer, Communication. Mary Susan Kachorak, Theater, All College Honors. Catherine Marie Kalkman, Philosophy. Megan Claire Kelly, Political Science. Brianna Jean Kendall, Spanish. Megan Luisa Kestel, Elementary Education. Megan Jean Kitty, Psychology. Alice Delamares Wambui Kimeu, Economics. Brittany Ann Klang, Biology. Jillian Nelson Corpy, Psychology. Kaylee Alyssa Kosak, Nutrition. Leslie Ann Kowalski, Psychology. Cynthia Marie Kraft, Music. Nicole Hisaya Krisa, Psychology. Lindsay Catherine Krieg, Psychology. Laura Jereen Krippner, Social Work. Emily Ann Crump, English. Liza Rosemary Krzenski, Mathematics. Megan Colleen Cool, Environmental Studies. Deanna Nicole Coos, Social Science. Jessica Ann Loggy, Elementary Education. Emily Ann Langlois, Psychology. Amanda Marie Leisenheimer, Dietetics. Kimberly Jo Lempola, Elementary Education. Elizabeth Louise Leslie, Elementary Education. Jennifer Ann Lean, Biochemistry. Sarah C. Leeser Goltz, Elementary Education. Allison Cheryl Lindbergh, English. Michelle Aletha Lippert, Communication, Spanish. Sarah Beth Litchie, Political Science. Catherine Jane Lockwood, Political Science. Amanda Marie Loudon, Communication. Nicole Marie Luberta, Environmental Studies. 
Mediatrix Francis Mapunda, Biology. Rachel Nicole Massup, Bi Management. Krista Ann Matafi, Psychology. Teresa Irene Matlin, Psychology All College Honors. Claire Louise Matun, Psychology. Melissa Ray Matson, Mathematics. Megan Therese Maui, Management. Kelly Christine May, Communication. Mary Elizabeth McCarney, Mathematics. Joanna Lynn McCauley, Psychology. Carol Ann McDermott, Political Science. Margaret Byron McLoon, Elementary Education. Brenda Marie Merritt, Elementary Education. Andrea Marie Mulliners, Biochemistry. Stacy Anna Meyer, Sociology. Nicole Ray Michaels, Elementary Education. Anne Kathleen Mills, Management. Sarah Elizabeth Milner, Commuter Science. Susan Marie Moen, All College Honors Distinction in Chemistry. Jacqueline Suzanne Moran, Elementary Education. Kelsey Colleen Morrison, Psychology. Blanca Cloris Munguia, Communication, Spanish. Ellie Jean Murphy, Psychology. Nicole Caroline Nauman, Elementary Education. Erica Marie Nelson, Art History, Communication. Nicolette Marie Nye, Communication. Juliet Marie Wynn, Biology. Malia Ann Wynn, Psychology. Kristen Ashley Niehaus, Communication. Janelle Diane Nisler, Communication. Wakaba Nabori, Psychology. Patricia Elizabeth Nolan, Communication. Heather Ann Novak, Music. Leah Marie Novak, Biology, Philosophy. Lindsay Ann Novak, Dietetics. Kristen Marie O'Brien, Psychology. Mary Bridget O'Brien, Liberal Studies. Sarah Kathleen O'Keefe, Communication. Erin Lee Oberton, Psychology. Elizabeth Anna Olson, Theater. Gina Ann Olson, Elementary Education. Leah Renee Ortiz, Biology. Caitlin Elizabeth Ostlin, Biology. Samantha K. Palatichok, Natural Science. Sarah Elizabeth Panzer, Management. Disha Dilip Patel, Psychology. Leslie Plazarchik, Management, Spanish. Lindsay Marie Peters, Philosophy, Spanish. Sarah Elizabeth Petrachik, Economics. Katie Jo Funenstein, Environmental Studies, Natural Science. Robin Ann Pierce, Biology, Psychology. Lisa Lynn Pikus, Psychology. Elizabeth Grace Pileski, All College Honors, English. Erica Catherine Primus, Elementary Education. Leah Christine Pustavar, Management. Amy Rose Rada, Elementary Education. Chelsea Marie Randall, Psychology. Elena Frances Reinke, French, Political Science. 
Sarah Lynn Ryder, Music. Justine Ann Rickles, Social Work. Megan Elizabeth Reeland, Elementary Education. Catherine Marie Rabadou, Psychology. Kelsey Elizabeth Robinson, Economic Spanish. Papaypan L. Rodriguez, Elementary Education. Jody Elizabeth Roars, Accounting. Rena Elise Rolfson, Management. Amelia Lavake Rosen, Dietetics. Michaela Jo Roski, Elementary Education. Magda Ruzakova, Management. Stephanie Joy Rosinski, Psychology. Kelly Gowen Ryan, Communication. April Grace Safford, Psychology, Spanish. Katrina Nicole Samlaska, Psychology. Laura Catherine Sand, Management. Megan Beth Sand, Political Science. Lisa Jean Sarn, Communication. Jessica Rose Sawyer, Art. Jessica Marie Shearley, Communication. Elizabeth Claire Schiller, Liberal Studies. Krista Marie Schlangen, Social Work. Corrine Marie Schmidt, Elementary Education. Melissa Ann Schmitz, Spanish Theater. Amanda Marie Schultz, Mathematics Theater. Sophie Marie Schottler, English. Melissa Marie Schroeder, Biology. Heidi Elizabeth Schultz, Mathematics. Brooke Marie Schaefer, Management. Elizabeth Kennedy C., Environmental Studies, Political Science. Anne Lorraine Simmons, Social Science. Danielle Marie Simpson, Political Science. Kamaria Lynn Skoglin, Biology. Jenna Christine Skrypek, Elementary Education. Marissa Ann Scusa, Psychology. Catherine Lynn Smith, Political Science. Lindsay Lene Smith, Elementary Education. Ashley K. Smithson, Communication Management. Sarah Ann Smanum, Biology. Bridget Ann Spaniel, Accounting. Allison Lee Stortz, Natural Science. Caitlin Reve Strand, Communication, English. Elizabeth Stewart Strawbridge, English. Sherry Marie Sapala, Dietetics. Kathleen Ann Swart, Art Communication. Aisha McKinney Sylvester, Political Science. Rebecca Ann Tice, History. Amanda Lene Teagues, Art. Jessica Marie Tierney, Biology. Sarah Lynn Trout, Communication. Tenzin Tsomo, Accounting. Marcy Lynn Tweety, Political Science. Katrina Amanda Twetton, Communication. Elizabeth Rosemary Tui, English. Margaret Ann Tui, English. 
Kathleen Ann Utley, Liberal Studies. Lindsay Marie Utzinger, Psychology. Angela K. Vanden Hemmel, History. Gwen Catherine Vanelli, Management. Anna Sophia Vilgeth, Management. Krista Kim Vissers, Communication, Spanish. Danielle Trieste Vlasny, Biochemistry. Amber Lynn Wasik, Psychology. Kelly Ann Walk, Natural Science. Haley Rose Waklarowitz, Political Science. Akane Wada, Individualized Psychology. Michelle Marie Valerius, Mathematics. Alliston Christine Weaver, Political Science. Stephanie Marie Weimer, Management. Kristen Therese Welch, Social Work, Spanish. Jenna Lee Wendorf, Psychology. Alyssa Gail Wentz, Psychology. Melissa Ann Williams, Psychology. Mary Colette Winsenberg, Communication, Political Science. Maria Bita Whitham, Art. Janine Marie Worms, Biology. Stacy Jean Worm, Management. Tina Marie Yarkey, Elementary Education. Stephanie Lynn Yuso, Accounting. Catherine Ann Zadroik, Psychology. Kelly Francis Ziegler, Accounting Management. Aaron Gleason Zrust, All College Honors, Accounting. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Jody Marie Albrecht. Rachel Nicole Anderson. Michelle Ann Bozer. Aubrey Jean Dahl. Shanna Beth Danielson. Valerie Jean Durand. Nicole Ann Erpelding. Cassandra Lee Fleechek. Catherine Ann Frost. Angela Marie Gerald. Megan Elizabeth Haynes. Carolyn K. Healy. Anne Marie Hidding. Andrea Lee Jurek. Anne Marie Karkala. Rebecca Ann Kastner. Kristen Ann Kelly. Chandra K. Keski. Kara Jo Craigseth. Molly Catherine Lotch. Amy Elizabeth Lang. Michelle Lynn Miller. Michelle Ann Nagley. Catherine Marie Ness. Kendra Ray Osterberg. Emma Lee Rick. Ashley Rose Rorick. Lynn Nicole Rochedel. Megan Lynn Schaff. Erin Kathleen Smith. Ashley K. Thiner. Sarah Elizabeth Voss. 
Danielle Marie Williams. Please join me in giving our graduates a round of applause. Dear graduates of the class of 2006, congratulations. As president of the Alumni Association for the College of St. Benedict, it is my duty and pleasure to welcome you as our newest members. Would all St. Ben's alumni please stand? <laughs> Not counting the graduates. It is our honor to welcome you graduates into our association of over 16,000 incredible women. Women like you with a great deal of talent, heart, and soul. It has been over 15 years since I was sitting as you are now, patiently waiting for the commencement festivities to be over, but also feeling a little anxious about trading St. Ben's in for the real world. Take a moment to remember that you have not just graduated, but you have graduated from a wonderful and magical place, a place made special because of the Benedictine values and traditions that you have experienced here, whether you are aware of it or not. Values such as spirituality, community, and hospitality. I hope that as you look back at your time here, you will realize that the College of St. Benedict, Benedict is a truly special place, like no other, and that the connections you have made here and the sense of belonging to this community of women will remain with you throughout your lives. As graduates and alumni of the College of St. Benedict, you all are exceptional women who belong to a special community. I challenge you to bring the spirit of St. Ben's to the real world. Congratulations and welcome to the Alumni Association. God our Creator, and giver of all good things, you whom we call love. Look kindly upon your people gathered here, especially the members of the College of St. Benedict, class of 2006. As they bid farewell to their companions of the last four years, may they have joy in their memories and hope for their future. Gratitude for what has been and eagerness for what will be. May they look back with satisfaction and look ahead with serenity. As they journey through life, may they continue to grow in knowledge and wisdom, in confidence and compassion, in competence and patience. May they always have friends at their side, the remembrance of your faithfulness in their hearts, and a prayer for the world on their lips. May they always have time for the lonely, bread for the hungry, and a word for the weak. May they carry with them the Benedictine values they learned here. May they never turn away from someone who needs their love, and may you bring them all together again in everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> 